Hi, my name is Sharita Hinkson, and I'll be telling you a few stories today. When I was a little girl, I always knew that I would go to college one day. My parents were adamant about me getting an education by any means necessary. So this meant that I was on the prowl for academic supplements and scholarships from the time that I was in kindergarten all the way through high school. And when they gifted me with the best gift ever, which are younger siblings, my relationship and understanding of everything changed. Of course, the time and understanding and relationship that I had with my parents changed because I was no longer their only child. My interactions with my teachers changed, the amount of time that I spent with my peers and friends decreased, and my understanding of myself and my individuality changed. I became this big sister who had to become a little bit more independent so that my parents could focus their time and energies on the younger children who needed their help. My show and tell project literally turned into a photo of my new baby brother. My best friend was my younger sister. And I was making a lot of decisions for myself. And these decisions looked like what I wanted to do after school and what snacks I wanted to bring for lunch. So would it be fruit snacks or zebra cakes? Major life decisions. Nonetheless, I can see how being a big sister and gaining independence so early on in life helped shape me and the way I approach tasks and challenges to this day. And while I enjoy helping my parents, fixing things, and playing surrogate parent to my younger siblings, I also learned how to be my own company and I'm a self-proclaimed loner. This upbringing is the principal influence behind what I describe and consider to be both my biggest strength and biggest weakness, and it has to do with the fact that I am someone who prefers to work alone. That doesn't mean that I'm no fun to work with, I've been told I'm a great group project partner, but for a while, working alone and relying on myself to produce quality projects and products was sustainable. I got to take credit for everything and rest assured that what I presented to my teachers and others was up to my standards. However, this all changed when I got to college. I just graduated this past May with a degree in accounting as a part of the unforgettable coronavirus class of 2020. And even besides living through that, to me the most unforgettable part of my undergraduate career would have to be when I struggled and failed miserably. And that sounds unusual because I just told you this story about superstar big sister Sharita taking charge of her life. Well, junior year hit me like a ton of bricks. I had approached my first two years of college the same way I had done the first 18 years of my academic career, and it worked. I did everything that I was supposed to do on time and correctly and expected that the results would be that I performed well. And that was the case, but I tried to apply that in the latter half of my academic career here at college, and that was not the case. I was quickly humbled, and I realized that we as people and as humans in need of communication are not built to go through life by ourselves. So I finally made friends junior year. Well, senior fall came around and it was going great. And just like anyone who approaches their graduation, I was so excited. My class load in the spring was supposed to be so light. I was going to be at all the social events and have the best spring break ever. And I excitedly counted down the days until graduation. And that was the case and exactly what I did in the spring of my senior year. However, on Friday, March 13, 2020, I left for spring break and I never came back because that following Monday, the United States implemented coronavirus lockdown measures and that meant that my senior year was cut short. I spent the rest of my senior year more than 50 miles away from my campus and hundreds of miles away from all of my new friends that I was supposed to spend the most memorable last moments of my undergraduate career with. And it was sad for sure because I gained a few pounds. But on a positive note, something that I did gain was a few pastimes. And I also learned and realized a lot as I quarantined. Ironically, I realized why leveraging social distance is one of the best things to ever happen to me. Now, before I explain that statement, I have to give some context and build on a concept that many people have a hard time believing. And that concept has to do with the science behind degrees of separation. Now, if you don't know, the six degrees of separation is an idea that was first proposed by a 20th century Hungarian author. It was later researched further by Stanley Milgram and more academics. Scientists from Columbia University and Harvard University have collectively, have collectively determined through studies and experiments that each person on Earth, yes, all seven billion of us, are only separated by about six people. So this means that the ability for you watching this video wherever you are in the world to get into contact with me is only as difficult as finding five of the right people. Studies from Facebook have found that even more recently, due to globalization and the expansion of social media, that the degrees of separation are decreasing. Nonetheless, another name for this idea is the average social distance. And for many people, practicing physical social distance has exposed the innate human need to connect with other people through touch, 
communication, conversations, breaking bread, and entertainment. For some people, that's game night. But for people like me and other introverts, this is the perfect reason not to talk to other people. But what if we reimagined the idea of social distance as something that we need as humans rather than just a response to a novel virus? Over the last few months, I've really gotten into board games and before they weren't something that I ever really found interesting until I had nothing better to do and I was quarantining. But interestingly enough, the game that I found to be the most fun and playable by people of all ages, as there are both younger children and older people in my family, happens to be this game of Tumbling Towers. Now, if you don't know what this game is, you get these wooden blocks and you stack them into the shape of a tower. And the goal of the game is to restructure the tower in as many ways and as often as you can without making it fall. And it sounds simple, but it's really not. Because you quickly realize that when you play with people who are just plain jerks or risk takers, the structural integrity of this tower will falter. However, if you play the game with people who are responsible and thoughtful about the stability of the structure and concerned for the next player's turn, the game can go on for what seems like forever. This balance of risk and stability reminds me of a concept that I believe we all experience at some point in our lives and happens to be the motto of an organization that has meant a lot to me. And I'd like to call it the value of lifting as you climb. You see, this tower is more than just a quarantine pastime to me. It represents strength, vulnerability, the ability to be swayed for good and for bad, to be restructured. I think it represents you and me. This game, just like any other game, requires some sort of assembly. It comes in a bag or a box and is scattered in pieces and in need of formation. This can symbolize society, life, and anything else that isn't born into perfect order and structure. And just like in this game, in the game of life, you have to start building in order to play. However, with anything requiring instructions and stability, you may need different types of help in order to assemble a strong unit. So in simplistic terms and in terms of this game, you'll need someone to buy the game, someone to teach the instructions, people to play the game with, of course yourself, and you may include anyone that just wants to observe the fun. But even with all of this help, you'll find that a structure can still have weaknesses. If we think of ourselves as these structures and the blocks as life's both good and bad lessons, anyone can tell you that throughout this journey, things can happen that cause us to metaphorically or literally lose stability. And that can present itself as family illness, death, heartache, or other growing pains. And while these things are largely negative and affect the stability of the tower, without them, the heights are stagnant. In the giant version of this tumbling tower game, setup starts at 26 inches. And as you start to build, you realize that it can stack to over five feet high. And this makes me think of the incredible effect of connecting with other people and forming relationships and what the effect has been on me. My superiors, my peers, acquaintances, my younger siblings and my mentees, they've all had impactful roles in my personal and professional development, even though they have different levels of expertise and experience. I consider them to all be teachers and I reckon that all of us have the same or similar teachers in our own lives. So this is my tower. It has been impacted by both the wonderful and challenging aspects of life and it has been built and rebuilt and made up of lessons that I've learned from all of my four teachers in the school of life. I consider my first teachers to be my parents. They literally created me and are the foundation of who I am as a person. They contributed to my understanding of culture, values, morals, and other things. My tower is also built by the relationships that I've formed with other educators, such as my teachers and other people. My tower is also fortified by the relationships that I've had with my peers and acquaintances, both good and bad. And finally, my tower, of course, is made up of the things that I learn about myself and other people and everything every day. However, I don't believe that any one of these teachers is more important than the other. And one could argue that your first teachers are the utmost important because the foundational things that you learn will either help you or harm you as you reach new heights. But my argument is that at any level with any of your teachers, the structural integrity of your tower can still be affected. Because as you can see here, if I try to move any of these pieces, the tower can still fall. Filling in holes and strengthening weaknesses is a process that never ends. And although I technically graduated from college, I don't know if or when I'll ever graduate from the school of life. No one teacher is more important than the next, regardless of age or academic hierarchy, because the impact on our lives from all of these people that we meet or get into contact with have the power to strengthen you or shake you. 
Also important is the fact that not only is life about building and rebuilding yourself, but using the resources that you have to support someone else. And when you do that, that doesn't necessarily mean that your own heights will be affected. That is what I would consider to be the value of supporting others as you climb and leveraging all relationships. So as we continue through this unprecedented time requiring physical social distance, I think it's important that we remember that as long as we're breathing, growth and development never stops, and that our strength as individuals is a group effort. Social distance is so much more important to us than just protecting one another from illness. It's also more important than just giving people their personal space. I think it's an innate reminder of our interconnectedness. I'm only 22 years old, so I've only been alive for as long as you could Google something. But one thing that I've realized for sure this year and throughout my life is that we are not meant to go through life alone. And as the African proverb says, if you want to go fast, go alone. But if you want to go far, go together. And when we begin to approach understanding one another as a collection of structured and unstructured pieces, a culmination of ideas and beliefs picked up from all people throughout this journey of life, connecting and building becomes a lot less daunting. So I leave you with a task. Reflect and think about your own wooden tower and acknowledge your strengths and weaknesses and figure out where your weaknesses lie. After that, think about who you can turn to to make those areas stronger. Is it one of your four teachers? Is it Google? Or is it one of the seven billion other people that you can get into contact with via the average social distance? Also, for whom are you able to act as one of the four teachers? Is it your child or your sibling? your teachers and mentors, your peers? Is it someone you've never met? Figure it out and get to work because lifting as you climb and leveraging social distance is one of the best things you could ever do. Thank you.